the place marker strategy for property consultants. What is it and how can you use it to grow your business? That's what we're talking about in this video. Now, rather than being a strategy to take you forward, like many of the, the other strategies we talk about, this one is more about knowing where you are. It's, it's about getting your bearings because whilst many business owners believe they know where they are, that belief is based on assumptions. And it's normally driven by emotional bias of how you feel about a particular client or service offering. But this strategy came about because I get business owners asking me what they should do in their business. And it was like they believed I had some kind of crystal ball or time machine. But as an outsider, I could only answer based on my perception of the business. So I try and give them, them an answer based on a 45 second conversation where they tell me about the business. But that could never be the perfect answer for them because it was based on my, my own assumptions. So understanding where your business is in terms of its growth, its client base, its service offerings, that's where you need to start when it comes to choosing the right strategy that you need to follow. This is more like the strategy before the strategy. It's a bit like a story I sometimes use to illustrate this point. So if you wake up one day and decide to go to Disneyland, you get on the plane and you fly west. After 10 hours, you look out the window and all you can see is the blue sea. So you go and ask the captain how long it will be before you arrive. And he tells you it will be another 18 hours. And the reason for that, you thought you were in London when you set off, but actually you were in Sydney, Australia. So you flew west and now you're in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Now, you wouldn't do that in your day to day life, but most people do it in the business. So the place marker strategy is about knowing where you are before you set out on this growth journey. And actually, when you go through this, it's, it's very easy to see what your next step should be, because it's all based on hard data rather than being based on emotion. But with this strategy, you need to get into the detail of the business. Who are your clients? What type and size are they? How much revenue and profit does each client provide the business? You'll start by, by making a list of every client you've ever come in contact with. By the way, everything we talk about here shouldn't be a static document. It should be something that's, that's updated all the time. So it's constantly moving and changing. So you've made a list of all your clients, past and present. Next, you should analyze how profitable each of these clients are in terms of gross profit. For example, if they buy something from you at a low price, let's say you have a membership platform that they join, that will probably have a different profit margin to a higher price product, like say a high-end retreat, because it, it costs you more or less to, del to deliver the experience. So after you've looked at how much profit each client provides to the business, next you'll want to identify which sectors those clients belong to. Now, when we talk about sectors, we need to go really deep. For example, we might say that a client is from the construction industry, but if we really dig deeper, we know that the construction industry, industry is made up of perhaps 50 different individual trades or sub-industries. So we really dig deep into who those clients are. When we know what subsectors they come from, we need to identify what size of business they are. And you might do that by how much revenue they have, or it could be based on how, how many staff they employ. When you finish this part of the process, you'll probably have a group of, of what we might call buckets. We can go one step deeper and add location to this process as well. So you can do this however, makes it easier. You could either do it by postcode area, by county, by regional, however it makes sense. One option could be to use colored pins on a map. So you have a, a different color pin for each year, for example. And every time a new client joins, you add that color pin to their location on the map. Next, we want to look at how each of those subsectors and buckets have grown or fallen in demand. And it's, it's best to look at this on a macro scale. In other words, looking at it year by year rather than week by week. 
Although if you have a month by month analysis over many years, this can be helpful in, in predicting quiet or busy months in the future. So when you've got this full analysis of each bucket, you should start to see trends or patterns. Normally what you'll see is that you, you, you might have one subsector of clients that create more profit than others, or perhaps a, a subsector or location that seems to be growing over time. Next, we want to look deeper into your clients and their in, into their industries. What's happening with your clients? Are they growing? You might see that a couple are growing whilst the rest either stay the same or some might be reducing in size over time. And what's happening in, the, in their industry? Is, is their industry heading into a recession? One example, in one of our businesses, we provided support to hotels. At the time, there was a massive movement towards smaller hotels and hotel groups being taken over by the larger national chains. Now, for us, that had two possible effects. Our clients would either be taken over and we'd lose the contracts, or we'd have the, the opportunity to, to support more hotels by working with the, with the companies that was buying them all. But by knowing what was happening in, in our client industries, we could identify potential threats and also potential opportunities. You might identify that you have a, a handful of clients that are real ambassadors for your business, and they make up a large portion of your revenue. And this, this can show you who your best clients are, but also identify a potential hazard. For example, you might lose clients for whatever reason, and that could damage the business. You can see in this example, those clients in red, they provide a lot of revenue to the business. But if you look back at, at the client analysis and the industry analysis, Jimmy's Emporium in this example and the retail clothing trend showed that both were falling over time. So if we ignore that fact and we rely on this client to continue making up a third of our total business, that means that our business will also reduce in size alongside the industry and the Jimmy's Emporium business. But because we're aware of it, after doing this analysis, we can now choose a strategy to reduce reliance on that client and away from that industry. And instead, perhaps focus on attracting other clients in the, in the alcohol industry, because we identified that, that was the fastest growing industry of all. It's only after you have this understanding about the business, about your clients and about your client industries, that you can start to prepare and create a number of strategies to grow your business.